I tried a new thing. Let me know what you think in the chat if it actually worked or if you liked it or whatever else. Um, happy Sunday. Welcome to another week. I've been missing in action for a couple of Sundays. Needed a break and the Maker's Box wasn't here yet so I wanted to wait because it's the Maker September monthly box and it's the puppy. So we want to start with puppies. Um, so while we're well, we're getting warmed up while I'm checking everything's working and stuff. Let's let's just have the, the ramble about what's going on. Oh, guys, let me know if this sounds okay. I'm trying with the microphone less in my face this time um, because I keep hitting the thing and I notice the sound kind of gets a bit loud when I get close to it because I fidget. Um, what have I been doing this week? A lot of exciting things I can't talk about. I, I can't even, not even slightly, show you this little project. Can't show you that at all. Um, but right, I have got so much things that I need to be doing. So does anyone else do this? So you do a totally different thing altogether. Now, one thing I'd had an idea for, because I've been doing more stop motion stuff and I purchased this thing to help me with stop motion. I will maybe show you all some point later. Um, but I purchased the, <laughs> this little guy and I was watching videos that this this is a great like kind of totally how you go off on a tangent. So I was watching videos on how to make stop motion puppets and I thought, oh those the armatures look really cool. Um, and then I looked at the price for getting the stuff to make stop motion armatures and they're really expensive. And I thought, well, I bet Lego or Meccano has something. And then I ended up with something that is not going to be for stop motion, but but I did a thing. <laughs> and it's kind of, now I'm thinking of making a puppet, <laughs> a needle felted puppet. So um, crazy ideas, but I've figured out a moving armature. <laughs> this took me all week, so I had so much stuff that I need to be doing. But the, here's here's a little project I'm working on. I don't know if this is going well. It's just a prototype just now, but I don't know if I kind of like it as an idea of a kind of horse or something. Or it really is a cute little man. <laughs> it it is kind of fun. Um, but anyway, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> Um, right, shall we get into things? Because I do have a lot of wires down here. That's one thing I have. I do have my Maker's... Ooh, there we go. My Maker's monthly box. And it's the puppy. And I'm excited. I think today what we will do is kind of follow it as as it's meant to be and we'll probably only sort of get the shape of the puppy and then I'll think about because we talked about horrifying things <laughs> making them horror so we spoke about perhaps making a dog more like a frankenweenie dog um but we'll see um so 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 what I shall do just now um guys everybody let me know if everything's working um because I don't want to do the unboxing I always do this I start doing the unboxing when nobody's watching <laughs> um but let's let's go down to here anyway oh everything's in the right screen at least that's a good start We have Dawn in the house. Hello there, Dawn. I hope you've had an awesome week. And Sophie from The Makers, thank you so much for joining. Um, I know you ladies are super busy just now. Well, super busy all the time. So thank you for popping in. All right. Okay. Um, I think I think we're live. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if everything's working. Um, give us a thumbs up in the in the chat. Give us a thumbs up in the video or uh. Hey Pam, it's working. Um, <laughs> oh, I think so. Yes, um, Sophie's saying yes to Frank and Weenie. Okay, so everything's live. So let's see what's in the box. Oh, look at that. Camera's a bit blurry today. So as ever, ooh, we have 
our newsletter with everything that's coming up. The fairy box is a pumpkin fairy. That is so cute. My red tissue paper <laughs> that I will be doing a project with at some point because I've got hundreds of this stuff and it's gorgeous. I love it. Um, this would be the eyeballs. Oh, cool. Yeah, he do, we do his bat as well. Oh, cool. Um, okay, so do we want to do puppy half size or regular size? Let me know. I don't even know what size it comes at. Um, but here is the newsletter for the puppy and what to do about the subscription. For those that don't know, there's a link in the comments. This is the month Makers Monthly Makers subscription box. Every month there's everything you need for a project. Um so the oh this is cute now where instructions are down to uh which way around does it go it's an a5 yeah down to an a5 but that's really cute um and we get a bigger thing for the template yeah so it looks like it's going to be a big puppy let me know um i am i'm happy to do it at that size but i'm happy to do it at half size as well let me know um oh flesh pink is our sample i have a massive bag of the flesh pink it's it's really handy because it's it's flesh pink for for light colored skin it's it's actually not bad <laughs> it's very close okay th this is pam pink <laughs> it's very pale as am i um and then we've got our our wool Right. I'm building up too much boxes again. <clears throat> um, Serena's in the house as well. And Eva, hello there, ladies. Good to see you. Right, we'll put the template here. Nobody saying, yes, make it small, or no, Pam, don't you dare make it small. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm going to look at the instructions. Well, what have we got in here, first of all? Um, ooh cream luxury luxury organic core wool cool so it's luxury core wool i'm loving it so it's not the lanolin rich um beige mountain cheap and dark chocolate oh that is dark that looks black but i guess that's going to be for the accents and pinch of flesh pink australian merino that's quite a darker flesh awesome um and we get the eyes uh this is a green viscose wool felt sheet. That's a nice, nice mix. Um, and Joy Retreat yarn. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. All right. Um, so he should be 20 centimeters in size when done, which is this size. Or I'm going for a 10 centimeters puppy. Let's break them rules. <laughs> um, so it means I have to, well, I half everything which isn't quite right because 3d dimensions but we'll go with that um and as ever um with me old woman eyesight no i can this is lovely and clear so there's uh, notes to beginners lots of warnings and everything um okay but then we're on to our directions which look like we've got to start with oh, this fella Bridget, hello there. Thank you so much for joining everybody. Um, take a big, well, hang on. If I'm going to do half, half the quantity, we'll see what that turns out to in size. We're, we're winging it. Oh, Lisa's here too, missed your lives. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, I was away on holiday. And then when I came back from my holiday, not taking forever to pull that apart when i came back from my holiday i was exhausted and then last week i hadn't got the dog's kit yet the post was was delayed so i decided to take another sunday off it was nice to have a break but i missed you all as well okay take a big pinch of this to put aside for finishing touches that's a big pinch but i also have the other half because we're going we um Oh, Sophie's okay with me doing it small like that's cool um, and I split the rest of the wool into two equal portions there is no chance I will get them equal but let's pretend oh this is quite a long staple for a core wool 
Oh no, but it just seems to like sticking together. Um, Susan's good for a small dog. <laughs> Lisa, I hope you had a lovely time. How dare you abandon us? <laughs> okay. Um, also, I've not felt too much. This project has been designed to be soft and squishy. And do I? I do. I do. I do have my three needle felting needle because I know Alicia will kill me when I keep doing everything with the one needle. Um, so the body, take your first portion, roll it to about 15 to 18 centimeters wide. So... Uh, under 10 um because we're going half so roll it up so this is the wee body um but lisa yes i did have an absolutely lovely time um my friend's parents have a caravan down doing the water at um Dunoon, which is a lovely place in scotland um it's it's the other side of the River Clyde. I live on the River Clyde, um, but it feels like another world. It, it's not the easiest to get to. You either have to go on a boat or like a two to three hour drive round because Scotland's coast is quite fractured. So it feels like you're in another world. Very beautiful. We did lots and lots of walking, lots of sleeping, lots of sights, you know, lots of taking pictures of gorgeous landscapes um, and lots of eating. Not so much drinking because the lots of sleeping as well, but it was nice and it's, oh, and lots of swimming too. There's a swimming pool on site that feels safe because we still, I was at the, hence, hence why the hair is doing this, um, but we're still in some level of restrictions and I did look into if I, I've got two swimming pools like not that far away from me um just council run swimming pools not fancy ones but I looked into them and I knew that you had to sort of book in advance to get a slot because restricted numbers and everything and you've sort of you've got to go and in and out quickly and you know follow all the guidelines that's fine but when I went to book a slot you need an account that's fine also um but when I went to set up account that you have to pay a subscription which was never as I say it's a public swimming pool so usually you just walk in pay your money you don't need to sign up so I was a bit like I don't want to pay a monthly subscription when I don't know now that I'm back you know I just want to go for a swim when I feel like it I don't want to be tied into going all the time just to the one place so yeah I was I was mad about that but at my friend's caravan they have a swimming pool on site that's quiet it's clean it's well regulated so we were able to get a swim every day and it was lovely and then on the final day this was like the first or second of september while driving home it was so warm that i actually got some actual swimming in the clay um which is nearly the sea it's salty it's on a sandy beach it was great so i've not done that not actually swum for ever because usually it's really cold <laughs> um dawn noon not not quite but <laughs> that's good and serena yeah um good, good question hey sophie how's you and the little one i uh, don't yet yeah, it is a beautiful place it's really nice um oh wow sophie the little one's nine months old next week wow time does go fast yeah she's crawling and cruising around the furniture <laughs> and oh so sweet and a handful i bet once they start moving um oh lisa um Sounds perfect. Absolutely is. Restrictions. Uh, um, BBC just confirmed they're scrapping the passport for England. Oh, we weird. Um, I think they're going with the passport for Scotland. I'm. I've not been following things to be perfectly honest. Um, I I wait for other people to tell me if what I'm doing is legal anymore. <laughs> Um, but I think they're keeping up the passport. I know some of my friends run clubs and they're sort of tentatively opened, but doing their own version of the passport you need to have the your confirmation of vaccination or have had a recent flow test and stuff so they are still keeping it people are still being sensible here even though <laughs> Woohoo! congratulations scotland has the highest numbers per 
per capita in the world just now, I think. Yay! <laughs> Uh, you know, it's just like, whatever. There's nothing we can do anymore. You know, we just have to be as sensible as we can, but get on with life. And thankfully, the weather's been great. So me and the dog have been trying to keep up our long hikes and stuff in the country, see lots of things, get that, that final, squeeze those final drops of vitamin D out of the sun, all that kind of loveliness. Um, right, trying trying to get this smooth but at the same time not felt it too firmly because we all know that I overdo it but that kind of looks sort of like a version of half of the size of this okay um so now you split your second portion into two halves put one half aside for the leggies uh roll the other half into a ball felt lightly oh yes i've seen this method for making heads before especially for puppies do the the head and the nose all all in one yeah i don't think i've ever tried this or i haven't tried it for absolutely forever so i'm excited to see how this will work so felt lightly i'm trying i'm still trying to like work it so everything's a little bit smooth because i didn't wrap that very good but just trying to sort of felt the surface so we've got a nice smooth start so I can see what I'm doing with the muzzle and you can see it in the template so we're just going to div it into there because puppies no matter the breed puppies just look quite a lot like potatoes it's super hard to tell what the breed is until they're until they're a few weeks old at least they are just very adorable potatoes <laughs> Lisa, yep. Anywho, back to the crafting world. Absolutely. Well, that's it. Needle felting, crafting, it's it's safe, it's relaxing, it's the best thing you can do. And it also, um, if you're making for other people as well, it can bring some happiness into the world. So woohoo, there we go. Who thought I would I would be all all hippie and nonsense? <laughs> but it's the truth. Um, okay, so let's let's that 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 looks like a ball to me. So let's make it look like a head. Um, so stab to make a step. See, quiet because I'm concentrating. So how's everybody's week been? You, you guys chat amongst yourself while I'm trying to make a head look head shaped. Um, I'm really having to focus on on this because it's not how I it's not how I do things. So I'm excited to see if I don't mess it up. So that's going to be the top of the head and this is going to be the muzzle. I swear it's going to be the muzzle. <laughs> Ginger's in the house. Um, good morning. Um, and yes, we need to get all the vitamin D we can for the winter coming next week, likely. It, it's it's Scotland here, so so who knows what, what we're getting next week. Hopefully it's not too bad. Um, because next Friday I've got the final stage of our holiday, hopefully. Um, my um, When we were away, there's... I was going to say, did I talk about this? I've not, I've not seen you since I came back. But there's um, a, a, sh a ship, a boat, I can't remember what you're supposed to call them, um, that's the last ocean going paddle steamer i believe in the world um called the waverly and it's cruising scotland just now you can book on cruises on it and because of the situation that this is the really cool the, the cool the cool bits of a sad time but because of the situation it's running at one third capacity so we thought this sounded like a really cool cruise um so we booked to do it while we were away on holiday to go from Danoon to go up one of the lochs and then back down but on the very day when we were up and ready to go a cruising, they had to cancel because there was trouble with one of the engines. She's an old bird, so these things are going to happen, unfortunately. Um, 
So because of that, we were told we could book again. We could rebook if we wanted to. So thankfully, we only live up the water a bit. Um, and they said even if the cruise was more expensive. So um, we were we noticed that the cruise that we were going to get on in Danoon had started in Glasgow, coming all the way down. We were going to get it in Danoon, do the cruise up the loch. And you see my hand in duplicate here. Sorry. Do the cruise up the loch back to Dune, get off, and the ship would finish in Glasgow. So we can book in twice the length of a cruise for half for the same price. So we're going to get on at Glasgow and do the full cruise that way. And it sounds all fancy with restaurants and bars and <laughs> things. So, yeah, that sounds fun. So let the weather be good just for next week. Let's not have winter quite yet. Um. Okay, which way around does the puppy's head go? I need his picture while I'm at it. Okay, right, so the heads, I do think I need to thin out the front of that. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. So that's his muzzle. So his head's going to sort of poke out this. It rotates. I can put it on any way I want just now. I didn't just do that. I'm going like, should it go this way? Should it go that way? It rotates. Bam. Just just put the head on with the mus muzzle pointing. <laughs> I've only been needle felting for like 13 years or something. <laughs> do you? Um, Ginger's waiting on dye packets to get mailed so you can dye camel hair yarn. You have three orders to fill. Well, congratulations on the orders. Oh, Dyeing is, is another skill that I've not got the hang of. Um, but congrats if <laughs> congrats that you can do it well. And camel, I've I don't think I've seen camel wool into knitting wool. I've used camel wool, but I probably wasn't in very good quality because it was rough and horrible as anything. So I think sometimes what us felters get is the nasty stuff. <laughs> Pamela, hello there. Good morning from Silverstone, Oregon. Wishing you great weather for next week. Thank you so much. I'm back to Old Faithful, the single needle just now. I just, I feel I have more control to get right because I don't leave fluffy fibres because I'm terrible at following instructions. It's easier to go like right through the body into the head, right through the head into the body and it joins up reasonably nicely um, but I just feel more comfortable with my single needle to do that especially when I'm not really paying attention I'm, I'm chatting <laughs> chatting nonsense um, and of course after the head I'm just slowly trying to shape the muzzle if I remember correctly Frank and Weenie has a bit more of a pointed muzzle anyway and a little less of a stop the the stop is is how much of a difference there is between the front, the, the forehead and the nose. Some dogs, it kind of goes straight out. Some there's a stop, some there's no nose. Um, obviously, well, I, we didn't see Frank and Winnie as a puppy, so he would still be more potato-like because we've said puppies are potato-y. <laughs> um, but I do want to, I think, Frank and Weenie was a bull terrier like Bullseye in Oliver. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I will get pictures of him for next week, but I didn't think we would get that far this week. It's really unlikely. So because I'm slow. Well, no, these projects should take this is a once a monthly kit and really don't try racing through it. Take take your time and enjoy it and learn the new processes that you're going to learn because everyone there's something new in that I haven't seen before. So, yeah, don't race it. It should it should take a while. Um Oh, Serena's wishing wishing her little one was six months. Not not six nine months again. Yep. Um. Oh, Ginger, thank you. Yes, uh, Weenie was a bull terrier, so that gives me. I say um, puppies look like potatoes. Bull terriers, I believe, even the breed standard says 
their their heads are supposed to be egg shaped but frank and weenie had more of a pointy nose so we'll go for a little more pointy but as a puppy i think he would have had less of a pointy nose because of the whole being a potato thing <laughs> potato shaped egg i'm great at describing things this is why <laughs> this is why the makers make the kits create the kits and I make the kits because I'm terrible at describing things. And for anyone who hasn't left any fluff and their, their bits aren't connecting, you can always like add in extra fluff, like under his chin's just not getting there. So I'm just adding a tiny pinch of extra fluff and that just, helps hide the seam and just felt it in a little easier and the same with any like seams you don't have to felting if you sit and take your time with the felting you don't need to do this but you can take tiny little wisps and that covers any joins because except i'm making a puppet creature oh hit the mic making a puppet creature that probably has joins but we'll add them in later um apart from me hitting the mic guys is the is the mic loud enough is everything working there okay and who was here at the beginning who saw my intro <laughs> i spent a, a good 10 a good lot longer than 10 minutes that's another thing i was doing that i was distracted by that um i should have been doing other things but i made an intro for the show <laughs> Um, <laughs> Serena has no idea who who Frank and Weenie was. Um, it's a Tim Burton cartoon. Um, I believe the live action was whoa, way back. Um, I think right. I might be making it up, but Frank and Weenie was kind of Tim Burton, the director's like vision forever it was what he wanted to make so he got he got to he made a live action version i think for himself um but that that got out but it didn't get seen by a whole load of people and then he got he did all the films um you know like nightmare before christmas and everything and then finally just a few years ago he got to make a a puppet version so i'm not oh, i see ginger's asking who am i doing the live version or the cartoon version which was more pointy i'm not sure <laughs> i just vaguely have in my head i know it's i know he's a bull terrier so i'm going to leave it at that for just now um and we'll work more on that later um right i'm i'm doing the over felting again because by the time we add in ears and everything it will start to look more puppyish anyway it looks very weird just now um split your remaining into five um four larger piles and one slightly smaller pile i can always add um if i've not got enough i can always add because i'm only doing half size so i, I shouldn't run out but that feels pretty good Front legs, back legs, tail, I think. Mind you, if he's a bull terrier of that age, does Frank and Weenie have a weenie? <laughs> a weenie tail? Someone remind me. Probably Ginger seems to be the only one. Um, yeah, um, Ginger, the live version was his first movie. Um, oh, yes. Um, I'm nearly forgetting the makers do legs different from me, and I really like it. Um, I was forgetting. So we take one pile, fold it in half, so that's going to be the end, and then roll it up horizontally. I think I'm right in <laughs> doing that. I think that's the way to do it. And then felt. Yes, I forgot about that method. Um, oh, Serena, your third baby turned four on the 28th. And then started school in the second. Oh, wow. Um, and your youngest started with their childminder, so it's been stressful and emotional. Oh, I bet they're all growing up. Um, gives you a bit more more time to yourself. And, and how exciting <laughs> starting school. But, yeah, at the same time. Oh, 
Um, and yet Ginger the live version was the first movie. Um, oh, Serena, there's been a strike at your partner's work, so he's not been paid in two weeks. Good grief. Um, and Bridget saying to Sophie, I bet you're having so much fun with your baby. Absolutely. You, you enjoy them. <laughs> They're definitely not that little very long. I mean, nine months flies in. Um, sorry, reading ahead. Can't read and felt and talk at the same time. There's multitasking, but not not like the three. Um, so yeah, we're just making tubes for for all the four leg piles. I'm loving the description of leg piles. <laughs> and then we're going to do paw pads. I think. Oh, actually, we're getting through this quick. This this core felt. I think this this was a different core than the lanolin rich one, but it doesn't smell as strong. Um, but it felt really quickly as well. It's very nice. I'm actually paying attention to everything and the colours of everything because I've got some I've got some plans for stuff to do if I don't get distracted with making random trying to trying to make puppets trying to make felted puppets that move if i don't get too distracted with that i've i've got some plans for things i need to do so yeah i think i i think i might go, need to go shopping soon <laughs> um oh serena you're home alone now wednesday and thursday nine till three. First time been on my own in seven years hopefully i'll get a lot of felting done oh that'll be a strange adjustment um but then the time will fly in once you're used to it but wow yeah seven years so that's quite a difference to be all by yourself yes um treat treat yourself relax a bit as well because you've been through a lot um Oh, Lisa, I've been working on my website. Congratulations. <laughs> Making websites is, is hard to do it all properly. All the boring admin work. I just want to get to the fun, back to the fun making parts. I know. Whoops. No one told us as, as creators, <laughs> actually getting to create stuff is not the largest part of, of a day in the life of a creator. It's, it's quite sad, really. <laughs> There's all the learning to photograph to market if you're doing your own website and all all the other things it's, it's not fair someone we, we all just need someone else to do all of that for us and we can get on to creating how much more creativity would we be able to do all the things that i've bought i i just i'm looking over there because looming at the side is the helping hand thingy that i got for the stop motion i want to do more stop motion stuff um but yeah, not not today. Um, uh, yeah, Sophie's saying the same. Take some time and treat yourself. Abs I bet it's so easy if you've been running around for seven years. <laughs> now you've got to say, I've got to tidy this, I've got to do that. It's like, now nah, put your feet up. You deserve it. <laughs> trying to think what other exciting things I've got that I can tell you and I'm not allowed to tell you quite a lot of them but it's really there's some really cool opportunities coming up that I will share with you all as soon as I'm allowed to but super fun stuff um hopefully fun felting stuff um but yeah <laughs> that that's the thing that oh oh yes I'll do the secret for everybody who is selling on Etsy. Um, I can't tell you what's coming up, but coming up really soon is a really cool kind of thing um, on E-Rank because I work for E-Rank as well, so I get the insider knowledge. Um, so there is, and and I, I, I like I find all of the new tools cool and everything because 
I'm like involved in them. But this one I think is going to be really cool for a lot of people. So just I, I will let you know when when the video drops. I'm not making the video, but there'll be a video on the E-Rank channel and I can't tell you why, but watch the video and do what it tells you to do in the thing, even if you think, oh no, that's not something I'll be interested in, because not telling you any more than that, but just do do the thing that the video is telling you to do if you've not already done that for your shop. Okay. okay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the baby's crying in the background, but your partner's about to take her out for a nap. Oh, yeah, they're not always fun. Well, I've I've not had babies, but <laughs> but I, I also remember with puppies, people are like, oh, puppies are so lovely. And they are. But I remember um, I remember when my Ben was a puppy and. He was a really calm puppy, but, you know, the rawhide chews, which are really bad and everything, and they would give him an upset tummy. But I would give them to him sometimes because it gave me, like, half an hour of him being quiet <coughs> where you didn't have to watch that he was electrocuting himself or something. Oh. <laughs> so I can't wait to hear all the secrets. I know. Tobias is in the house. Hello there. Good day, Stabbers. Um... Oh, Serena, hopefully we'll finally be able to felt my chihuahua. <laughs> yep. Oh, they're so much fun to make. I, I've had quite a lot of people asking how to do chihuahuas. So there's this might be something for the makers. <laughs> um, or maybe I should do a tutorial when when I get when I get an order for a chihuahua, I will film myself making it. There, that's that's a deal that's a little bit easier. Um it's kind of tough that the makers will know and then if you're making a tutorial or if you're making a video while you're making something it takes so much longer to make the thing <laughs> if you're also photographing or videoing it so much harder um <laughs> bridget saying hi to bias up there in freedom oh bridget are you you and the, I, I can't remember quite where everybody is, but I know Australia's being, um, I'm sorry for my friends in certain areas in Australia. It's been tough. Um, Lisa, intriguing. Does E-Rank SEO advice also work for independent websites asking for a friend? Um, not really. Um, we don't have the data. I mean, yes, I would say keep an eye out for things, you know, the what people are, I suppose, what people are searching to buy on Etsy will be slightly different, but what's trending, like, you know, when slime's suddenly trending, it's trending everywhere, and definitely keep an eye on, like, what the Pinterest is doing and stuff, that gives you an idea of what trends are up and coming, but no, not specifically, not exactly the same, Um, an E-Rank SEO advice, well, Okay, Google's slightly different, but best practices are best practices. So find the good keyword you're aiming for. Put the key. All right, I'm going to tell you this is a little secret I've not shared with anyone, but I just heard from Etsy. Um, but Etsy and Google had a communication, <laughs> had a chat. And now I knew this was best practices ages ago, but everyone has always said this doesn't make a difference on Etsy. And it does make a difference on your websites, by the way. Um, but Google said, although Etsy changes the file names of our photo, they change our photos when they, uplo when they upload them to Etsy, Google sees the file name and includes it in its SEO. And very much, quick tip, if you're building your own website, anything else, it's good practice anyway, but save your image by a file name that makes SEO sense for what your item is. Um, and Google can see that. Now, the difference in SEO is tiny, but it's a good practice anyway. If you name your item, if you name the image with a decent file name, you know what it is, you know how to find it anyway. But Google specifically said to Etsy and everyone at Etsy that was on the call were like, what really <laughs> so so google specifically said it name your file name something seo-y <laughs> not spammy but you know if it's 
if it's a needle felted chihuahua dog, call your file needle felted chihuahua one. Don't call it DCSM. <laughs> um, what have we got to do? These were the front legs. Oh, we've he's got one buff back leg and one titchy one. I think he's been running around like a haggis running around the mountains. Um, but anyway, um. So, bend the paw forwards, and yeah, um, bend the paw and felt around it while it's in that position, yep, so it's really carefully, but you hold it in the position you want, and you felt, and it will, it'll hold in that position, um, um, Oh, Bridget, lockdown <laughs> forever. Can't focus in lockdown. Oh, Serena, made your first open mouth dog the other week with a little tongue. Um, I'm going to make, I assume that's more open mouths. Yeah, I love doing open mouth. Do I have, I have a ton of, oh, I do. <laughs> so I have a ton of dogs in here. I love making open mouth dogs. They just look so happy. There we go. <laughs> and it's not difficult. Um, I think not to toot my own horn I started felting many years ago but I was one of the first people that did an open mouth because um I wanted to basically I, I wasn't following tutorials and everyone seemed to do the same thing and stuff I was like why can't you open the mouth so I did that Uh, Tobias, sympathies for those in lo lockdown. We're not taking our freedom lightly. Constant vigilance. Absolutely. I feel so bad for everyone in Australia because you guys worked so hard. You don't. Nobody, nobody deserves this. But I really hoped you guys could get out of this unscathed. But it's tough. Um, yeah, Ginger, I heard the rumor three years ago and keep forgetting to do it over the images. Yeah, I knew it was a thing years ago. I didn't think it worked on Eatsy. Eatsy didn't think it worked on Eatsy, if we're quite honest about it. Um, and it's something on websites I kind of do, but I don't do enough. So definitely websites, name the file name. And also, it's a good practice if you have on your website that the ability to name photographs. It's a good thing to do that for um, people who can't see so well, or if it doesn't, you know, if it's not loading up so great, you know, name name it if it lets you do that. I know I can do that on Blogger. It's add alt text. Um, I've not built a website in a long time, so I don't remember how to do it. Right, paw pads. This is the dark brown into a ball. So we just want a tiny bit, but not so tiny because this is the the palmy bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to do the, the actual tiny pads. I have been felting tons of my little bookmarks. I don't have any up here to sh uh, do I? Oh, yes. I've been felting tons of my bookmarks. So I've been doing hundreds of tiny paw pads. Um, so, yes, I'm quite, quite used to <laughs> doing this, but not on this scale, actually. Um, but yes, I've been doing a lot. Um, and yes, you do want a slightly more triangular pad. Has anyone seen the pictures of the the kitten, people taking pictures of kitten's paws because they look just like little teddy bears, <laughs> if, you, if you imagine it. And it's really true with the little body and then arms and I don't know how it works, but they look so cute. Um, okie dokie. I'm only going to do three. Three. It, it, a dog has, they have four anatomy 101. Um, but the dog's front paw is like 
they're they're up on their fingertips and they've got four fingers and then your thumb is the dew claw. Um, back legs, they've either lost the dew claw but it's still only four, or some breeds have two dew claws. Isn't selective breeding weird? That's that's what happens when your cousins, your uncles, your dad, or something. Um. Uh, Sophie, I'm sure I remember an open mouth dog you made a long time ago. You were felting a half chow chow that had a blue spots on its tongue um, and had to make it open. Oh, wow, it was out of its own fur too. Oh, I love doing that when you can. Yes, some some dogs own fur really felt well and it's a lovely little tribute for people. But yeah, I, I think I made, I started felting in about 2008 and... I think I made about two dogs following, sort of following instructions in a book that I'd got. And then I, then I was like, well, firstly, the instructions that everyone, everyone at the time was using, because it was so new, everyone just did what we were told, kind of. And everyone was making dogs with like no mouth at all, just, you know, the muzzle, which is really cute kind of way to do it. Um, but nobody was doing anything and I made it and my partner at the time looked at it and said it's really good but why has it got no mouth and I was like how dare you <laughs> I've, I've followed the instructions but then I thought well what if I put just a little line of black and there we go it had a mouth and then and then that started me on the whole well why can't I have an open mouth <laughs> why is nobody doing an open mouth so I gave it a try and I'm sure I'm not the only person I just I hadn't seen anyone doing it to follow how to do it. So I made up my own method to do it. Um, Ginger, yeah, photo naming makes sense if the meta description should tell Google what you're selling. Yeah, I mean, I will say, right, Google is trying to get more and more clever, as as is Etsy, but Google's way ahead. Um, for, for instance, like... Like in, in YouTube, which Google owns YouTube, they watch the, the, the machine can watch the entire video. Um, this is not just like making up strange things because it learns certain points, pardon me, certain points in the video and adds its own kind of chapters. Um, we are doing between we are doing between the pool pads. So my video that I made years ago about why I pronounce eat C wrong. I didn't put any, we can put chapters, timestamps in the video. I didn't put any chapters into the video, but Google did. And so when people searched, I don't think I'm number one anymore, but when people searched on Google for how to pronounce Etsy, not only would my video come up first, but it would come up at the section that told you <laughs> why I said it like it. I do. So it, it, listen to the whole video and pick a sensible place to, to show to people which is amazing it can read text on images and everything and um yeah what what i've been talking about on on etsy but works for your own website if any of your pictures if you right click on the picture and in google go um search google picture or what, what does it say search for image that's it search for image um, if you look at that, what Google then Google tells you what it thinks the image is. So even if you haven't put the alternative text or something, if it searches and you've made a Google needle felted chihuahua, if your item comes up and it goes similar results, chihuahuas, felt dogs or something, you're like, Google really knows what my item is. So that's that's another reason why really clear pictures. So when it searches, it's like, oh yeah, totally knows what this is. This is sort of all the extra metadata that tells Google this is what your item is. Um, have I skipped something? Um, okay. Um, oh, am I supposed to do this on both the front paws? I'm not reading properly. Let's look at the picture. It, Oh no, one up, one up, one down. Got you. Right. So reading and talking, it's hard work. Um, yep, Tobias, the alt, thank you, the alt text here tag in HTML. 
in the image HTML. Awesome. <laughs> Lisa, the leg looks like a finger with an eye on it or a little ghost. <laughs> cool. Oh, Sophie, love your bookmarks. Thank you so much. Um, oh, and Bridget didn't didn't know about making a dog out of your out of its own fur. It's difficult. Like I get a reasonable amount of people asking me if I can make their dog out of its own fur, and I have to be very polite with it because if people are sending you the fur, it's not always good quality. Um, there's a difference between like you know they're they're saying oh can you make my long haired dog out of its fur these are the brushings that I have of its undercoat basically if you know what I mean that's not quite the same as if they'd um, like trimmed a little bit so I I always have to say yes I can make. I, I can add some of the dog's fur depending on the type and quality. I can add some. And so what I'll do, if some of the fur isn't, like if it's brushed rather than trimmed or whatever, then I would usually make like a heart on the underside of the animal in the animal's own fur. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's it got a core. It, it's got its own fur in there. But when you brush it, if your dog's more than one colour... <laughs> the fur um is not the color of your dog because it's a mixture so it, it's it's a bit of a pain so you have to be careful how to say it but it's like you're probably not going to give me good quality fur um but i did um one cockapoo one time i had a huge bag of ringlets and they were cool to put in the didn't felt quite nicely enough to just do the whole dog in it, but they were absolutely gorgeous to put in is because it was slightly lighter than the colour wool I was using. So it was like little highlights, which just looked absolutely adorable. So I really enjoyed doing that. Um, but other times I've had people send me dog hair and I love dogs and everything, but um, it's really stunk up my house with quite a doggy smell. <laughs> um, but it, it's their loved pet. But yeah, some, sometimes their pets are quite strong. <laughs> um, yeah, there's that mix mix the fur with some some proper proper with some sheep's wool to make it easier to work. That's another good idea. Serena pop, popped a pick of the first open mouth dash hand. Oh, fantastic! I. I don't know if I can share it because I've got a lot of screens open. Um, I can't. Oh, I'll, I'll come back. Um, <laughs> I'll come back to that. What even button am I looking at? There we go. Tobias, wow, you started needle felting in 2008 as well. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I know I wasn't lo the cheek of it I had, um, absolutely cheek of it, that I had been felt in for about two minutes before I decided to start <laughs> trying to sell it. So I know my Etsy shop was open in 2008, so I wasn't felting for very long before that. Don't don't take up a craft and then try and make a career out of it in minutes. <laughs> that might partially explain some of the why it took me so long. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but yes, let's try and make these similar sized. So we're doing back legs, bit of a hawk. Um, Lisa, you're most welcome. Glad, glad we can help a bit. Um, Ginger, Malmut would be impossible, even with the bags upon wags every week I collected. I thought about a sweater too. So, yeah, I've seen people make dog hair sweaters, especially with with a dog that sheds its own body weight in fur sometimes. <laughs> a pretty beige. Yeah, that would be lovely. Um, I've seen people do it. It just... Depends how doggy your dog smells because I've heard some people say they can. <laughs> Every time you get wet, you smell like a wet dog. <laughs> um, so don't get your jumper wet. But 
there are things I've also another thing that can be really cool I've seen a few people do if you felt or we no, if you knit or weave the fur you know spin it knit or weave it then you can kind of felt it a bit and use the fur as a background for a picture of the dog or something that kind of works too for 2d um <laughs> Bridget, don't need to use my dog's fur to felt. It just covers me all over anyway. They're generous like that, aren't they sweet? Yes. I, I, no, that's mainly all my fur that's on this one. But yes, I, it gets everywhere, doesn't it? Um, We've got to do pads on the hind legs as well, obviously. And you could, if you're another thing with with puppies, if they're really really young, or depending on the breed, like yeah, a mainly white bull terrier would be as well. You could instead of brown or black, um, add have pink pads, or even some some dogs have like pink and black pads. This kind of a mixture. <laughs> So you can muddle it up and pink pads are cute as well. Um, but oh, I think if we kind of get the legs positioned, that will sort of do for today. And then I can start searching for pictures of Frank and Weenie and decide where we're going with this. But I think, whoops, where did I drop that one? There we go. I my poor hoover because i do when i'm felting just myself in the sit on the sofa when i'm watching by the way the final season of lucifer's up and i'm 90 percent of the way through it already so when i'm sitting binge watching something and i'm doing pads like this i do drop quite a few so my poor hoover just has to get them all so yeah if you've got dogs and you needle help needle felt you need quite a special hoover <laughs> So yes, thankfully I've not not blocked mine with needle felting yet, but it's going to happen. Back paw and another one. Has anyone started on the puppy yet? I think Alicia was doing a Zoom today. Oh, it needs a little more there. I think Alicia was doing a Zoom. So who's who started the puppy and where where have you got to? And another, if you wanted to muddle this up, doing the puppy with the mouth open as well would be cute. I know we're adding a tongue, but the mouth open would be adorable too. And if you do them half size, like I do, because I'm cheating, then you can get two dogs out of a kit. <laughs> right, just trying to figure out how the how the paws are going to go on. I am. And then we'll be good to go. Right, do -do -do -do. facing a similar direction to the next. Right, I'm going to look at the picture and follow. Oh, that face is adorable. Great work, guys. Um, okay, I love that. Okay, so front paw, back paw, back paw. <laughs> oh, that's cute, cute. So it really is split it out the way um oh Bridget you finished the puppy in zoom of course yeah I'm, I don't know why my well I'm not post is late because post is late but yes I did that wrong um <laughs> post was really slow this week this month so I didn't get my kit and I know it was sent out on time I get the notifications it wasn't it wasn't the makers it's the post office it was quite a bit slower Usually I've got them by now. So I could have started last week. Um, oh, Tobias, halfway through making a woolly mammoth. Totally have to see that. That sounds adorable, right? I'm going to 
make your legs slightly less spread out. I have some dignity. I'm just holding them in, they'll pop out a little bit when I let them go, but it just makes it easier to felt them in. And the little wavy paw up to the face. That is so cute, guys. Um, that would be cute to do for a cat as well, like washing its face. I say cat, my dog Mia, she does that. Literally, she'll, she licks like at her duclo on the side there and wipes her eyes with it. And then... Nobody believes me. I can't get this on film. I don't know which way round it is happening, but I'll say it this way. It might be the other way round. But she um, she sucks her hind foot and gets it soggy and then gently sticks it in her ear like a soggy cutie. <laughs> now, I don't know if she's wetting her paw to put it in her ear or sucking the earwax off her paw, but she wet willies herself if anyone knows what that is but yeah she the but I, I have to get it on film sometime it's just and she's so slow and gentle just sticking her foot into her ear it is really bizarre i've never seen another dog doing that um uh, sophie made two puppies one for a sample and one for the instructions definitely takes longer when you're when you're taking photos oh yeah that's kids kids are kids are fun and it's lovely to do but yeah it's not just taking it's not just making it you have to make sure the angles are all right the pictures make sense the lighting and everything and your pictures are like super clear at everything that's going on so yeah definitely <laughs> um uh bridget we didn't finish just body, head, legs, but not really detailed yet. So, oh, cool. So we're all going to be in a similar place. That's good. I still haven't managed to get to the Zooms. I meant to. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Wow, a woolly mammoth, <laughs> an amazing idea. Um, um, <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Adorable. Uh, Tobias, the long tusks are problematic. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, if you are you felt in the woolly mammoth, I'm trying to think. Um, I would well, I would probably felt the tusks because <laughs> the weight these are going to be. Um, but remember, if you get a good firm armature, you can put polymer clay. You can put. A felted sculpture into the oven with polymer clay um just pop up prop up the make wire going through the clay make the clay prop the clay up before it goes in the oven and that should hold because polymer clay is not massively heavy um but yeah nightmare <laughs> I want to make a woolly. We all want to make woolly mammoths now. That sounds like a fun project. Um, Sophie, stick it on the list. <laughs> okay, I think I said I would put the legs on and then we'll come back to it for next week because I've got to look at pictures of Frank and Weenie. Frank and Weenie puppy. I am I am loving the idea of, of horrifying <laughs> cute thing, but it'll still be cute. It's not going to be horror horror. Um, but there we have start of puppy <laughs> he's definitely got a wee belly on him that's brilliant okay guys i will leave it there because i could fiddle at this forever um pop things back in the bag so i can find them oh especially especially his mat perfect <laughs> ah tobias is 3d printing I, I should have just contacted you 3D printing rather than me spending a small fortune on Lego and Meccano and everything bits to try <laughs> to try and get um puppet armature. I should have just should have just asked asked someone who knew about 3D print printing and just got a armature done that way. I don't know, that's probably like even harder work and more expensive. Um but yeah. 
Um, <laughs> Sophie, we need an Ice Age selection. I know that would be so, so cool. And dinosaurs are, are in, they're trending just now. <laughs> Love his tubby belly. Well, that was a total accident, but puppies do have puppies do have tubby bellies. Right, let's pop him aside for the week. Um, okay, guys, you all have an awesome week, and I'll see you next time.